Hey YouTube, Repo Man 64. Luke knows the order of all things. Luke is written primarily to the bride. I believe that all of the passages that we've seen where you won't know the day or the hour is directed towards the saints of the tribulation and the Jew. I don't believe it's directed towards the bride. I believe that the closer we get to the end, the more will be revealed to us. Just like I used this analogy in previous videos, you are on the shore of a very, um, a, a lot of current uh, of a river. It's very, very high current river and it's foggy. You cannot see the other side. Let's say for example, there's a thousand people. Everyone wants to get to the other side. If you walked up to an atheist and said, would you rather go to hell or to heaven? Because heaven's on the other side of this river. What would you do? And they would say, I would rather go to heaven. But when you put all of these obstacles in their way, and I'm going to show you what obstacle I found uh, in the Bible. But when you put all these obstacles in the way, most of the thousand will either walk away or wait on shore to see what happens as these people cross. As you jump from the shore to the first stone, you're jumping from stone to stone to stone to stone to cross to the other side. It is so foggy, you can barely see the next stone. But as you jump, the next stone is revealed. And as you jump, the next stone is revealed. There will be many who begin to jump, but then go back. There will be many who won't even attempt to jump in the first place. There will be a few, the bride, that will take this journey and begin crossing these uh, stones, these stepping stones on the way to the other side, not knowing where the other side is, even sometimes questioning whether or not there is another side or will they fall into the current uh, on their way over. But with each step, step by step by step, there's going to come a point, even through the thick fog, where you're going to be able to see the outline of the shore on the other side. And I found two things in the Bible. As I'm researching this, first of all, of course, I'm a bride. I am a uh, pre-tribulation rapture bride that believes that we will be taken out of here beforehand. I will continue to step on these stones going across. As I look at all the timelines and the, the, the stars and the moons and all these other wonderful YouTube channels that are trying to figure this out, and as you can see, up to this point, we have all been 110% wrong. But as we go forward from stone to stone, things are being revealed to us. It's not about, it is about us searching. It's about God revealing as we go the shore on the other side. Heaven is on the other side. And I'm going to show you a passage in Job that I think clears this up a little bit for all of us. And let me get into the photos. Now remember, this time in 30 AD, March 30th, 30 AD, when, I, when the Enoch timeline shows that Jesus, in fact, went to the cross exactly 33 years and 182 days from his birthday on September the 29th, and, of course, I believe the timeline is accurate because so many Gregorian times end up correct on the Enoch timeline. For example, and I've showed you this before, December 25th is his conception day. We have not been celebrating the birth of Christ. Even, and, and honestly, 
December 25th is the birth of Christ. This is the moment that um, Mary became pregnant. And then you go, she goes to see, why, why even talk about it? Why even have the discussion that Mary goes to see her cousin, who is six months pregnant with John, and John leaps in the womb. And when you do the math on how far she went, it lands on New Year's Day. This type of stuff can't happen randomly or by accident. How is it that the day of equal parts, and anybody can go look this up, exactly happens on March 16th? It has always happened on March 16th. It has happened on March 16th since creation. And if you look into the future, it will always happen. If you go to time and date, it'll let you go 600 years into the future. And guess what? March 16th is a day of equal parts. So that being said, Nobody says, including myself, that God must use one of these timelines. As a matter of fact, it is possible that he will use none of these timelines. He will not use the timeline where the year starts uh, the day after the day of equal parts. He will not use the timeline of the equinox. He will not use the timeline of the first sliver of the moon after the equinox. He will not use the creator's timeline, the full moon after the equinox, or the first sliver of the moon after the sun reaches Aries. God can use whatever date he wishes. And he might be directing us to look to Israel and to look to the timepiece in the sky, just like uh, uh, Ricardo, uh, I'm going to... I, I'm so terrible with names. I, I apologize because people get on there and go, hey, what's this name? I know. I know his name, and I and, and I always draw a blank on names. I've been like that much since I was a kid. Uh, so it, Ricardo's, uh, and I'll put a, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll put a link into the uh, comment section so you can go see Ricardo. Is it Garcia? It might be Ricardo Garcia. Uh, but his he uses the sun, moon, and stars to regulate when the new year is and quite frankly his uh he's he is coming up with uh the new year is being nissan one and that being i believe it was april the 21st now when he does that look what happens on the day before on march the 20th 2023 uh, an unknown eclipse is happening that I hadn't heard of. All I've ever heard of all this time was the eclipse in 2024. And this eclipse comes up and it happens on March 20th. Ironically, that is the day before the new year, according to Ricardo and his YouTube. And obviously, according to once the sun is in Aries and the first third of the moon appears. So this might be when God is using this. Notice how you have the sun in position, you have Jupiter in position of air, uh, of uh, Pisces, and you have you know, the moon eclipsing the sun, which the moon represents the bride as we are a reflection of Christ, and Christ being the sun is, is, uh, he is also Jupiter, the one that was um, striped and uh, wounded for our transgressions and he is also the bright and morning star venus so he has uh, several uh, things to look at when we look up i did this again in a different program and as you can see the moon is eclipsing the sun at uh, looks like midnight it begins or before midnight on april the 20th now let's get into what i was uh, what i had found this is Matthew. Matthew is predominantly speaking to the Jew. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps, while the bridegroom, and I'm going to show you, he cannot, he is a groom. He is not called a bridegroom until he is with his bride. He's not necessarily married, but he is with his bride at this point. I learned this from 
We are the overcomers. Wayne, very good teaching. Blew my mind. I have, and I'll tell you, in every single story in the Bible, you will find a bride, which is not mentioned much, and then you will find a saint, which is very important to God, and the Jew, of course, also very important to God. What it is, um, and he's focused now on all three of these groups because they are all very important. Just because you are not raptured as a bride or you are not raptured as a saint, the Jews are not forgotten and not dealt with. They are, but these are all systematically uh, in line. So here we have, while the bridegroom, he's with his bride, tarried, now, this tarried word, we've assigned it to the rapture of the bride, and it is not. The tarried is assigned to the saints of the tribulation and the Jew. They are unaware of what is about to happen. We are aware. We are uh, the Luke group, if, if you would like to call it that. We are aware of all things. There are many, may they outnumber us, many, many people out there. I wouldn't call them evil, but I would say that they cannot see the rapture of the bride. They cannot see it because in all these stories, when we talk about the thief on the cross and the other thief, we, <coughs> we assume that we are the thief on the cross that accepted Jesus' the last moment. That is simply not true. We are Barabbas. Very little about, spoken about him, but Jesus was up. He was up there with Barabbas. The saint on the cross is a saint because Jesus said, Today, I tell you, I'll be with you in paradise. The bride does not go to paradise. The bride goes to the third heaven. You can read that in 1 Thessalonians. I'm still a little stuffed up and sniffly sorry about that. Now, all ten virgins slept. They slept. The bride is wide awake. We are waiting. Once we're taken... Jesus will come back. I've heard good teachings on three and a half years and 30 days and 50 days, and, and I don't know. I, I'd like to just tell you, and I believe these things as we go across these stepping stones in the fog where we can barely see the next stone, as we go across, I think new things will be revealed all the time. But these 10 virgins all fell asleep. The five virgins are the saints that had oil, and the five virgins that had no oil are the Jew. The bridegroom is already with his bride. Okay. And then I looked it up just to make sure of what I was talking about. Why does Jesus call himself a bridegroom? Jesus describes himself as a bridegroom, which implies that there is a wedding where there is also a feast. Remember, we are going to this banquet. When we get to heaven, and I hear this, I hear this, it's, it's a sad story. I hear this all the time. People are going to be like, I just barely made it. Just by the skin of my teeth, I made it to heaven. No, you didn't do anything. When you get to heaven, you, me, every single one of us, all of the bride, there is going to be a great celebration an amazing celebration, and they are going to give us crowns and have this royal banquet and white robes will be placed on us and a rod of iron to rule over the nations and a mansion. And it's going to be so incredible. And they are going to tell you and me and everyone that is there, wow, you did it. What a great job. No, not about your salvation. Your salvation is sealed, just like the salvation of the saints are sealed, just like the salvation of the Jew is sealed. No, what you did was you learned the order of all things. That's why you don't you see that you were already saved. John 6, 44, everybody thinks they did something. You didn't do anything. Therefore, you can't lose anything. The question is, were you ever saved? And I'm not asking you specifically because so many of us, me included in the past, before I understood all of this, would question, am I really saved? I did have this bad thought. I did do this bad thing. Yes. And the reason is, is because you sat there for a moment going, 
am I saved? I did do this bad thing and I did think this bad thought, but the difference is you didn't and you didn't revel in it. You didn't you didn't it wasn't joyous for you. You weren't being sneaky. Uh the sneakiness of my life is gone. It's wide open now. Um do I still do bad things? I'm sure I do, but when that happens, you feel remorse instantly because of what resides inside of you. It's not about you. I'll say this a thousand times. It is not about you. Sorry. <coughs> Apologize for that. I'm still trying to get over this thing. It is not about you. Everybody wants to make it about themselves. It's going to be this because of this about me, and it's going to be it's nothing to do with you. The, the, why do you give your child an iPhone? Why do you give your eight-year-old an iPhone? Because he's such a great kid and you love him so much? No. You want to make certain, probably, yes. I mean, I, I gave my kids the top-of-the-line phone while I was in business can't do that anymore. But while I was in business, I gave them the best phones. Every single year an iPhone came out, I gave them a new one. I took their old one, gave them a brand new one. They stayed current. Uh, did I do that because they were such great kids and they deserved it? No, I did that because I don't I guess it shows that that uh, I was able to do it. And did the glory go to them when they went to school and they say, look what my dad bought me? And did they say, oh, you you must be a great kid. No, they know those kids. They're not great kids. All kids are little deviants sometimes. So the glory went to the father. It's a bad analogy, I know, but this is what I'm saying. When you get to heaven, they're gonna, there's going to be a celebration. Angels are going to be clapping. They're going to be so happy. They're going to tell you, wonderful job, good and faithful surgeon, uh, surgeon, uh, servant. And the reason they're going to do that is because because of what Jesus did for you. And as he, as you stepped from stone to stone, he revealed more as you went across. That is the evidence. This is a court battle. This is not knives and swords and, and angels, you know, wrestling each other in heaven. No. <coughs> Sorry. This is a court battle. <clears throat> I thought I could do this. I had been talking fine. This is a court battle in heaven, and Satan is going to lose. And what does he lose? He loses dominion over this planet. And just like when you go through trial, you're presumed innocent until guilty. And at the end, you are uh, judged by your peers, and then you are sentenced. Satan is going through court right now. And I'm going to show you in Job exactly what I'm talking about here in a moment. I, I talk too much. Let me not get this thing going too long. Okay. Bridegroom. The, the bride's already with him. When he shows up to get the, uh, the ten virgins, the bride's already with him. That's why it's called a bridegroom. That's the point I wanted to make there. Um, the, bridegroom, the, the bride belongs to the bridegroom. The friends who attend... The bridegroom awaits and listens for him. We see this in the story, exactly written that way, that they all fell asleep, and then they were awakened, and they came out. This is the second rapture, when they come out. And then, when the others that had no oil, no faith in Jesus whatsoever, returned, they said, depart from me, for I knew you not. <coughs> Again, I don't know how long after the rapture of the bride will it be for the um, saints to show up. Uh, I've posed that question many a time on here, and no one can give me a good answer aside from the two witnesses that do uh, get killed three and a half years in and um, not convinced that that is when the saints uh, will go home. I'm not convinced of that. I, I think that, this, that those two are here uh, to change people, obviously, but I think the instant change will happen the second the rapture occurs. They're gonna, I, I tell everybody, when you see me go, they, they know, they know um, when that happens. That, I believe that's what's going to drive them to their knees, and that's what tribulation is all about. It's not to punish anybody for seven years, although it is very punishing. 
it is to turn the hearts of people to Jesus to recognize that's the only thing that I need. If only I had Jesus. I don't have anything to offer. I just need Jesus. And when they get to that point, I believe it will be very quick after the rapture of the of the uh, the bride that uh, they will believe just like Elisha did as soon as he saw. And, and that's what Elisha said. When you see me go, um, Elisha dropped instantly to his knees, tore off his clothes, representing the pride or the world that he had, and... <clears throat> and what did he say so many times every town they went to don't you know that your master will be taken from you today and he said yeah 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 whatever he didn't believe until he saw but the second he saw he dropped his knees and tore off his clothes this is a little conversation I had with my friends um, this is me this is my part of the conversation and this is what I said. There's a thousand, and I, this is pretty much what I just told you, but there's a thousand people on the shore of, ra of a raging river. We all want to cross, but it's so foggy, we can't see the other side. There are stones all of the way across that we must jump to in order to finally get to the other side. Only a small percentage of the thousand will even try. Um, of those that do, some will actually turn back. These are the ones where um, we say, just because you say a prayer, you're saved, and that's simply not how that works. I do believe in going to a quiet place, but I believe the, um, the, the how your heart is at that moment. Is if you just go into a room and say, please, Lord, set me in. Okay, that's it. I'm saved. Boom. I'm in. No, it's not how it works. It's an actual broken and contrite spirit a broken and contrite heart god will not refuse <coughs> when you go in there that's it you're saved when you go in there and again god is the one that turns your heart you notice how he spoke to pharaoh he hardened pharaoh's heart okay he will change your heart to seek after him and once you are saved and once you are a bride he will begin to open your eyes to these revelations that continue to come in but the watcher continues to jump from stone to stone knowing that eventually he will reach the other side we are the watchers we are watching for this day we're dreaming of this day we can't think of anything other than this day and he said something and then i respond to laugh out loud we just keep jumping and god in heaven is talking to satan Ask him, this is a point <coughs> this is the point I wanted to make about Job. This is what's happening to the bride right now. God in heaven is talking to Satan, asking him, Do you see my bride? You wonder why Satan is going to and fro, back and forth from 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 earth to heaven. He's allowed to at this point, because he's still not been found guilty. Even though we know he is, he has not been found guilty in the court in heaven. So he's still able to go back and forth. Right now, as we speak, he can go back and forth from earth, uh, from earth to heaven. So, imagine Satan's walking and God says, Hey, Satan, what's up? What you doing? And he says, Ah, you know, just traveling from, going to and fro from heaven to earth. He said, have you considered, <clears throat> have you considered my faithful servant, Job? Let me finish reading this. I'll get over to that in a second. How faithful they are. I give them a little, this, and this is, this is a conversation, I think, and this I'm surmising, but I think this is a conversation that, and this might make you understand a little bit about what's going on. God is in heaven talking to him, he's, and, and God says, have you considered my bride? how faithful they are. I give them a little bit of information and they believe so much because we still keep watching, even though, like I said, I've been watching for a long time. <clears throat> I've been making timelines for a long time. Why do I continue? Why do, why do I keep doing this? Why don't I give up and turn back? <coughs> I hope I can finish this. <coughs> Sorry about that. Why don't I give up and turn back? I cannot. It's the spirit that resides inside of me will not allow me to do that. And anybody that is watching for this event, 
knows that. They cannot and will not give up. We'll continue to look at every little detail that's going on around us, wondering, could this be it? And this is our dream. So why does it keep happening to us? It happens to us just like it happened to Job. Satan said to God, give them less and you'll see. <coughs> so as we continue to search and continue to seek, I believe, and this is again me surmising, it's not written in the Bible, but I think that's what the story of Job is all about, that God has given us, he's the one that continues to give us, it's just the moment we start saying, no, there's nothing I don't know what else to look at, and boom, something happens. And a volcano goes off. Uh, they're, they're flooding in, in Fort Lauderdale. It's just all around the world, things are going on. China is about to attack Taiwan, you know. Dreams and visions, we don't create these things. God sends them to us, and, and he, just, he just keeps us going from stone to stone. <coughs> I wasn't coughing an hour ago. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's just me talking. So Satan says, give them less and you'll see. We do get upset, but we continue to cross that raging river from stone to stone in the fog. As God reminds us, where were you? And when we get angry, what does he say to us? Just like he told Job, where were you when I created the river and the stones and the fog that you questioned me? Yeah, we keep going. Now there was a day, this is Job 1, 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. <clears throat> I'm so sorry. <coughs> I, don't, I don't know why I'm uh, getting messed up right now. And Satan came uh, also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence camest thou? Where did you come from? And Satan answered to the Lord and said, From going, you know, to and fro to the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? Why would God Almighty ask Satan about Job? And he says that there is none like him in the earth, and perfect, and, and an upright man, one that feareth God, and escheweth evil. And Satan then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job uh, does doth Job fear God for not? <coughs> Hast thou not made an hedge about him? So God was protecting him. God gave him everything, and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side. See, Satan does not understand why is God going to and when God knows Job. God knows Job is faithful, not because of all the wonderful things that God gave him. Not God, God loves us, the bride, not because of all the information that he's opening up to us in these last days for us to see. We live in an incredible time right now, absolutely incredible time. But we don't love the Lord more or less because of this. As a matter of fact, Satan is arguing in heaven right now, going, give them less. Don't show them as much. And then sometimes we get a little depressed. And God, of course, will tell us in our spirit, who are you that you should ask me? You know, even though God knew Job believed on him, not because of the stuff, <clears throat> but because he's Job. <clears throat> I'm so sorry about this. Hast not thou made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. But put, put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath and he will curse thy, thee to thy face. One thing that the bride will never do is curse the Lord. We might get upset and, and concerned about days passing, but we will not curse the Lord. Neither did Job, but Job did question the Lord, why, as we do, Lord, why, why did this date pass? What calendar are you using? What timeline's going on? <clears throat> Can't you show us more? While Satan is in heaven uh, condemning us right now, saying, give them less, I guarantee you, they will take that stone and turn around and go back. They will not continue to cross. Satan is wrong. He was wrong about, he's wrong about Job 
is wrong about us. We're going to continue. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. So God allows this to happen. Not to harm you. It is evidence in court. They're in court. They're in court right now. I'm so sorry about all this. I thought I was cleared up, but they're in court right now. Satan is questioning you, me, all of us, going, oh, yeah. <coughs> I hope I can continue. Wow. I apologize. And God says that um, we'll give, you know, take take away Make it more cloudy. Make it more foggy. They can barely see the next stone. Don't let them see theirs. It, and, and this continues to happen to us, obviously. We've all experienced it. And we've all questioned it. And uh, But but we're going to keep going from stone to stone. And, we're gonna, and that's my point of all this, is that just keep going. Just keep going. Satan is trying to, to, to stop you. He doesn't want you to watch. There are so many people... A few in my uh, comment section, stop watching. You're wasting your time. Uh, get thee behind me, Satan. Job continued his faith. He did question, but he continued in his faith. All right. <coughs> now, I want to solidify who the bride is and when they go. I get this argument a couple of times stating that we go in seal six. We do not go in seal six. We are not the great multitude. Narrow is the path. Few will enter. This is the bride. The great multitude are the Alicia. They saw the event. They dropped to their knees. They realized the only thing they need is Jesus, and they don't need all the things that they thought they brought to the table. <coughs> <clears throat> after this I <laughs> after this I looked and behold a door was opened. What is that? When that door is opened, what happens? A rapture occurs. This is Revelation four. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, a trumpet calling me, which said, Come up hither, I will show thee th thee. I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit. Remember, he doesn't get a body. He is up there to witness this moment. And what does he witness when he gets there? Let's find out. The Bible will tell us. And behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, <laughs> inside like an emerald and round about the throne were four and twenty seats and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting clothed in white raiment and they had on their heads crowns of gold who has crowns of gold these twenty I, I just heard somebody say that the, Jesus is going to pick one woman out of eight billion to be his wife. This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard, by the way. So the bride is all of us. We are all a part of the body. So that don't even listen to that. <coughs> all right. So here we go forward. Still in Revelation 4, 10. The four and twenty elders fell down before him that sat on the throne and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns. All right, so we have 24 elders that have cast their crowns. <coughs> At this point, it appears the bride of Christ is 24 people. That's it, 24. Out of the history of 6,000 years, 24 people will be his bride. Not one, but 24. But let's keep going. Revelation 5. Thou art worthy to take the book <coughs> and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us. Must be talking about the 24, right? <coughs> to God by the blood of every kindred and tongue. Wait a minute. 24 people can represent 
every kindred and tongue and people and nation? 24. The answer is no. The 24 people are the head of the group of the bride. It is, let's call it a body, and this is the brain. We still need arms, fingers, elbows, uh, the rest of the body must show up. <coughs> Sorry. And priest, and we shall reign on earth. This group of people, the bride, receive a rod of iron, and they will reign on earth during that thousand-year millennium. This group of people is much more than 24. Let's find out how many there are. And I lost it. Let's see. Oh, down here below. Uh, and I beheld and I heard a voice of many angels round about the throne. That's it. We heard the voice of many angels round about the throne. Now let's find out how many of the beasts and elders there are. It separates it. The beasts and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands upon thousands. So it is a number above 100 million because 10,000 times 10,000 is 100 million. It is the number below 200 million because he would have simply said 10,000 times 20,000, but he didn't. He said 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands upon thousands. There is a number somewhere in between 100 million and 200 million that will represent the bride. When... He's speaking here. Everybody said, this is the angels. And no, it separates it with the word and. We heard the voices of many angels round about the throne. Those are the voices of the angels. But the beasts and the elders and the number of them was 10,000. I said, this is the bride. All right. There are many who claim that they want to be here through tribulation. <clears throat> that is the job of the 144,000 virgin Jewish males. I had a video on that some time ago. Um, it, you can Google it. About 144,000 boys, two years and under, died when Herod was trying to kill Jesus. Jesus is the Word of God. The 144,000 were slown, were slown, slown, were killed. For the word of God, I believe the 144,000 virgin Jewish males are those males that were killed um, two years and younger when Jesus came. Innocent blood was shed while they were trying to kill Jesus. And I believe that these specific, everybody else has died for a variety of other reasons, but nobody has died two years and under specifically for the word of God. So I think that's who the 144,000 are, personally. I want to get a big detail argument about that because I don't know for certain, but I believe that's who they are. Now, that's their job. Their job is to warn everybody during the tribulation. You don't want to be here for the tribulation. You don't want to say that because you were not one of those <coughs> babies that died two years and younger while they were trying to kill Jesus the word of God. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. And to what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. When we go, there will be no light in this world. And I believe the darkness for three days represents the bride leaving and the light of the world will be taken away <clears throat> until the Holy Spirit comes back and begins to do its work again in a different dispensation, a dispensation of the age of the tribulation. <laughs> the age of the tribulation, again, being to turn the hearts towards Jesus and recognizing who Jesus is. Even the Jews will take uh, nearly seven years to recognize who he is. If, as if a man did flee from the lion and a bear met him. So it's like you got away from one thing and you're asking to meet a, a bear and, and went into the house and leaned on his, his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. It's like you don't want to be here. This day is not for you. Stop asking to be here. Stop believing that the seals have been opened. There is not a single seal opened yet. 
they be, it, they had, did not start opening when Jesus was on the cross. That means we've been in, in, in the age of tribulation since the cross. The seals are tribulation. I've heard so many arguments about this, and it's it's, uh, it's silly, really. The seals mark the beginning of the tribulation. They have not been opened since <coughs> 2,000 years ago, and um, they do mark the beginning of the tribulations. We are in heaven to witness the first seal being opened. We're there. Jesus is delayed for some reason. John is crying. Where was Jesus? Where was he at? He was delayed because remember when he rose, many of the saints rose also. It's hard to understand that passage, but it appears as though the graves were thrown open, and then when Jesus rose, they rose. And they went into the holy city, heaven, but Jesus, remember, hung around till that afternoon. He was seen by many. He told Mary, don't touch me, for I have not ascended to the Father. He ascended to the Father. <coughs> he returned from heaven. It's explaining to us what's going to happen. The bride are those people that rose with him. I thought it was on the date that he rose, but for me, that date is past, April the 3rd. But it could be that none of these calendars will make sense and that ultimately it will be... <clears throat> I wouldn't have made this video if I know I was going to be coughing the whole way through. I apologize. This is not, uh, not fun for me either. <laughs> anyway, so... He hung around, but he went to heaven for those seven days. No, it's not seven years. It was seven days. The Bible records that he appeared to Thomas in the upper room. What were they doing in the upper room with the door locked? That Jesus had to go through the door without unlocking it. We all marvel at the fact he went through a locked door. That's not what it's talking about. He's telling you that he was in the upper room. They were in the upper room hiding from the Sadducees and the Pharisees. They were afraid to get killed. You won't see any more discussion. <coughs> After he appears to Thomas in the upper room of them hiding anywhere or being behind a locked door. He's behind a, they are behind a locked door hiding um, at that moment in time for those seven days because Jesus was killed, he was risen, and then he disappeared for seven days. And he returned. He spent those seven days in heaven. Give her her seven days, just like uh, Jacob Rachel and Leah married Leah. He got Rachel seven days later. He did not get her seven years later. How else would he know that she was barren? He got her seven days later. He continued to work for seven years. <coughs> I might have to stop this. He continued to work for seven years, but he got her after seven days, which is why I think the saints go home after seven days. I could be wrong, but that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing those six seals being opened up in quick succession. And in seal six, the great multitude appears in heaven. There's not a lot of conversation between um, <clears throat> the 10,000 times 10,000 and the great multitude that appear. Not a lot of stuff goes on there. No seals have been opened. Well, I'm sorry. The first six seals have been opened because they go on the sixth seal. But it's very quick. I mean, John was there, look over here, look over here, and, and that was it. So anyway, let me get back to this. I'm making this way too long, and I can't even talk. <clears throat> <sighs> you don't want to be here for that. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Okay? We, so we had so many, I mean, a, a lot of uh, uh, angered uh People even shamed a lot of YouTube channels into believing that what we saw was the mark, that thing that they put into everybody's arm. It was not the mark. It said all men, both great and, and, and free and bond, great and poor, all of them would have to do this in order to buy something. That did not happen. <laughs> it didn't happen when they came out with the barcode. It didn't happen when they... Um, came out with a chip in your in your credit card. It didn't happen when they came out with a social security number. <clears throat> this is them getting everything set up for the actual event. Getting people numb to the idea, oh, it wasn't that, it wasn't, oh, yeah, we laughed at them. Yeah, it was three and a, way long, way beyond three and a half years, it, because we know that anybody that receives that is destined. 
to go to hell. There is no redemption for anybody who has received that mark. None. There is no way out of it. And once they realized that it was uh, a lot of people weren't taking it, <coughs> they changed the story into saying that, um, into saying that, uh, well, you can still be saved. No, you can't. The Bible clearly says you can't be saved once you take that. So it was not the mark. So, so many things have gone on. <coughs> people have desperately tried to put us into the tribulation at this point, and we simply are not in it yet. It hasn't started yet. Don't want to be here for it. Whoops, hit the wrong button. All right, Luke knows the order of all things. Blessed are those servants who come to the, to the Lord. When he cometh, <coughs> shall find watching. <coughs> Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. I saw this on another YouTube channel. I was all ready to promote it. And again, you'll never hear me talk bad about another YouTube channel. But when they say something that does not um, line up with the Bible, I cannot promote the channel. So I'm not going to talk bad about him, but I'm not going to promote him. So I learned this off of another channel. Yes, you can learn information from people that have part of their information wrong. Okay. <clears throat> this is where I heard him say that Jesus is marrying one woman on the face of the earth. One. And I'm just like, wow. I, I, I don't know. I can't, I can't promote something like that. But he did say something very interesting, which caught my attention. And I did some research. I want you to notice here, there is an event that took place. He came and found them watching. He does not tell us what watch it was. <clears throat> that he took them. We don't know. But then he proceeds, <coughs> after this meal, <coughs> oh my goodness, I really want to get this done right, but this is terrible. I'm so sorry about this. And make them to sit down to meet, and I will come forth and serve them. He is, in other passages, we see that we're going to sit down to a great banquet. Jesus is going to serve us. Not because we're so great, but because of the covering he can't see. And when we get to heaven, we will not be able to remember any of our sins at all. They will all be washed away. They won't be seen. And if, now, that group is done. It's in heaven. It's sitting down to eat. Jesus is serving them because he's so great. Not because we're so great, because he's so great. But then it continues. And if he shall come in the sight, everybody says, we don't know when he's coming. We don't know if he's coming the second watch or third watch. No, that's not what this passage is saying. This passage is telling us <coughs> when he's coming. He doesn't specifically say the first watch, but he specifically says two more watches. And if he shall come in the second watch or come in the third watch <coughs> and find them doing so, blessed are those servants. He's going to come back two more times in the second watch and in the third watch. Did this guy that I watched discover <coughs> how this passage is supposed to be understood and the fact that we're going in the first watch? When is the first watch? We always look to Jerusalem. The first watch is from 6 p.m. <coughs> to 9 p.m. That would... Uh, be the time of the first watch. And know this, if the good man, Jesus, of the house had known, I apologize, it's not Jesus, this is the saint and the Jew. If the good man, <clears throat> that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched. <coughs> we know. I think we just discovered that we're going in the first watch. Honestly, I think this is showing us that we will leave. The only, there's only two watches that aren't named here, the first watch and the fourth watch. I believe we're either going in the first watch or the fourth watch. This is in order. Luke knows the order of all things. I think we go in the first watch. That's what this is saying. Oh, my goodness, I have to finish. <clears throat> I might not post this if I go through it and it just sounds terrible. I don't know. 
First watch, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. His second watch, when the saints will go home, at some time, is God showing us the hour that we're going? Not We know it's the year, because all the, everything works out. This is 1,993 years since the cross. We know when the cross is. We know it was 40 years before <coughs> the, uh, uh, the destruction of the temple uh, in, in, uh, in, in Jerusalem there. So we know he went to the cross in 30 AD. I don't know that there's many that will argue that. And so that's 1,993 years ago, leaving seven years for the tribulation. We're in it. We're in the right year. Is he revealing to us with this passage when the time? Does he have to reveal it to us year, month, and time, the time of day? What if he revealed to us 2023? the time and the next thing he's going to do is reveal the month which i don't know uh the 20th is looking pretty good to me sorry third watch 12 a.m to 3 a.m <coughs> fourth watch 3 a.m to 6 a.m luke for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even they have delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things. <coughs> the saints do not understand the rapture of the bride. The Jew certainly does not. Luke is the only one that understands the bride, the saint, and the Jew. It understands the order of all things. All right. I apologize. I, I was clear. I did not know this was going to come up. Maybe just all the talking I'm doing, but I'm all stuffed up again. It just sounds terrible. I'm going to lift it. If it's that bad, which probably is, but I don't think I can repeat this all. <clears throat> anyway. Stepping stones, just keep going. I couldn't make you turn around if I wanted to. I couldn't force you to turn around if I tried to talk you out of it. Nobody can tell us this isn't going to happen and make us turn around. <clears throat> we know the order of all things. So I'm going to get off of here. Go to a quiet place by yourself. <clears throat> Nobody needs to know. And you need to tell anybody. And accept the Lord into your heart. And um, I'll put a link to... A Wayne's We Are the Overcomer. you got to watch that video. Uh, he explains very clearly who the ten virgins are, and it's amazing. And uh, <coughs> I forget who else I said. I'll, I'll go back and listen, and I'll post them in there. We'll chat with you later. I'm going to go <clears throat> take some medicine or something. Wow. <laughs>